As the Super Bowl concluded, signaling the end of another football season, the NBA found itself with a golden opportunity. The first weekend solely dedicated to basketball, with the stage set for the All-Star Weekend, hosted in Indianapolis for the NBA's 73rd All-Star Game last Sunday, anticipation was high. However, the All-Star Game failed to capitalize on its prime opportunity in a monumental way. It was a circus, a complete joke of a game that left spectators scratching their heads in disbelief. Even the league's leading scorer couldn't wipe the smile from his face, despite his lackluster performance, scoring only seven points and showing minimal effort on both ends of the court. Even the rim was disappointed with his efforts. Yeah, Luca is terrible. <laughs> Luca is really bad for this game. He wasn't the only one committed to creating a complete circus. Nobody wanted to play anything remotely resembling defense, then launching shot after shot from beyond half court. Everyone stood around and let Luka and Jokic play their game of hot potato. The game ended with a final score of 211 to 186. Before this year, guess how many times in league history a team has scored more than 200 points in a game? You guessed it, never! 73 games with the 28 quoted best players of the year all on the same court together. And this is the first time that's ever happened. It just shows you the magnitude of how laughable this game has truly become. When was the last time we saw an interview at the end of the All-Star game where a player said, I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. <clears throat> Sorry, the Chester just came right out of me. This game capped off a weekend that was full of fan and media criticism. Criticism about the lack of NBA stars in the dunk contest and a flawed voting system, the potential All-Star deserving players who were snubbed, and constant questions leading up to All-Star Weekend about how or if it's possible that any of this can be fixed. Can the excitement or showing for the dunk contest ever be revived? Will players in the All-Star game ever give 60% effort in a game that legends of old once took as an honor? What will it take for the NBA administration, players, and commissioner Adam Silver to fix this? Can it be fixed? Or will the NBA embrace this embarrassing circus act and bring out the lions and tigers and bears next year? Let's discuss a few of the improvements that were made to this year's All-Star Weekend while exploring some possible solutions people had around the league. Coming into this season, Commissioner Adam Silver had an improvement plan built on three priorities. The top priority was to reduce player rest for those who weren't injured. Fines were implemented for healthy players who chose to rest during nationally televised games, particularly star players. Additionally, he established minimum game requirements for eligibility for prestigious awards such as MVP, All-NBA Team, Defensive Player of the Year, All-Defensive Team, and Most Improved Player. These adjustments have already sent shockwaves throughout the league, notably impacting Joel Embiid's chance at an MVP award this year, where he appeared to be the frontrunner. The second priority was to foster player engagement in the in-season tournament. With a prize of $500,000 for each player on the winning team and $300,000 for the runners-up, this inaugural tournament garnered significant interest and commitment from players. Throughout the competition, players expressed their determination to win the lucrative prize money, showcasing their competitive spirit. Players were scrapping and taking charges. The tournament provided a platform for LeBron James to display his playoff-level performance, earning him the tournament MVP award. It also propelled Tyrese Halliburton into the spotlight on a national scale, highlighting his potential as one of the NBA's premier point guards. While the tournament had its flaws, it underscored the potential of Adam Silver's innovative initiatives. Television ratings surged by 26% during the group stage, with further increases during the knockout rounds. Notably, the quarterfinal matchup between the Lakers and Suns drew an average of 1.97 million viewers, marking an 89% increase compared to a similar game window the previous year. That leads to the final priority, which was wanting the All-Star game to be more competitive. He was excited to introduce new changes to the game, which were developed by listening to the players. The NBA decreased wait times during the introductions and halftime. Since players felt the game focused too much on the entertainment side of things, he took it back to the East versus West format. After these changes, he really hyped up the game by saying, I think we're going to see a good game tomorrow night. With the success of the in-season tournament and the strides made in improving player rest, fans were hopeful for a refreshing change in this year's All-Star game. 
anticipation was high for a fiercely competitive matchup among the world's top players. However, that couldn't have been further from the truth. You could read the disappointment and frustration in Adam Silver's face as he rushed through the award presentation. And to the Eastern Conference All-Stars, you scored the most points. Well, congratulations. Giannis, to your team, this trophy is yours. This was a very different reaction than the in-season tournament celebration. In this disappointment, there were some positive hints towards improvement. The weekend started off with a celebrity game that fixed ESPN co-hosts against each other. Co-hosts Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. Sharp's team took the win after a very impressive showing by Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons see. ran over, like literally ran over men, women, and children. To say the least, Stephen A. wasn't happy about the loss but fans were dazzled with the surprising basketball skills of one of the best linebackers in football. Another high was the competitive three-point shootout, where Damian Lillard took home the win on his final shot. But fans were very excited about the highly anticipated matchup between Stephen Curry and WNBA star Sabrina Ionescu. The contest between the two was neck and neck when Steph made the last couple of shots to steal the victory. Sabrina stated after her impressive showing, if you can shoot, you can shoot. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or boy. But when it came down to it, she went against a freak of nature, a three-point god, a man who once hit 105 threes in a row. Last high though, this year's All-Star Game jerseys were fire. Back to the most important question. With all these initiatives failing at improving the game, does it need to be canceled or revamped like the NFL Pro Bowl was? Many suggestions have been thrown around in the media this week. Suggestions have been as follows. USA versus the world. The best NBA All-Stars born in the USA versus the best NBA All-Stars who were foreign born. Pay them. Have the NBA offer a substantial amount to each player of the winning team. Regulate the game more, such as finding players who give lackluster performances. There should be honor in being an All-Star. All these suggestions have glaring weaknesses in being realistic options. In USA versus the world, what if one year there isn't enough highly skilled foreign-born players? It would really create for a lopsided game. The difficulty in paying players is these are all-stars. These are players who are on large contracts and endorsement deals. Think about it. Would $500,000 to $1 million be a large enough incentive for them to play their hearts out? Offering larger amounts than that to players would be a very tough financial decision for the league. In regulating the game more, Adam Silver has found a way for regulations to work in the regular season. It will be interesting to see how he could apply it in the All-Star Game situation, without having massive backlash of players electing not to accept the All-Star nod. The last suggestion really banks on the fact that there should be honor in being an All-Star. Players like LeBron James, who has been a starter in 20 straight All-Star Games. Knowing as a player, you were chosen to play in a game with the best players in the NBA. You made the small list that many players would have loved the opportunity to be in your shoes. J.J. Redick. Austin Rivers and Kendrick Perkins have spoken about this after the game. Three players who were never chosen as an All-Star in their careers. Kendrick Perkins said, to be an NBA All-Star is an honor. It's an honor. I played 14 years and never made an All-Star game. Do you know how I would have felt to be in the All-Star game? Perkins played at a time where being an All-Star had that prestigious feeling. The players in the All-Star game had that competitive spirit and wanted to take home that win like Kobe Bryant so often talked about. I always loved competing in them. Um, I didn't lose many of them. When it really comes down to it, it's clear to see the honor is gone. Players are more interested in being chosen for the game than playing the actual game, which is partly understandable based on the countless hours and practice it took to become the elite and the best of the best. But when it comes down to it, would it hurt for them to watch the movie Miracle before the game? Where Herb Brooks tells his players, when you pull on that jersey, you represent yourself and your teammates, and the name on the front is a hell of a lot more important than the one on the back. Based on the success of the money incentive for the in-season tournament, it's hard to think the league won't use that system for the All-Star Game incentives by throwing a large bag of money in front of the players for winning the game. The 2024 All-Star Game was expected to add $320 million to Indy's economy alone. As fans, we deserve to see the real All-Star Game back. We deserve the best pickup game in the world. That's what the original idea for the All-Star Game was. That's what legends like Michael Jordan, Shaquille O'Neal, and Karl Malone competed for. 
to show they earned and deserved a place on that court beside the greatest players in history. They wanted to make a mark and build their legacy from that honor. It's hard enough to go back and admire those days of blocks and charges. Players doing whatever it takes to win the game and have those bragging rights under their belt. Let's hope changes happen to where we get this competitive nature back in basketball and get a 2025 All-Star game for the ages.